I'm Dr. Mesquia, Chair of the Department of Neurology at Mayo Clinic Florida, and I'll be talking about the severity of white matter hyperintensities and effects on all-cause mortality in the Mayo Clinic Florida Cerebrovascular Diseases Registry. The takeaway message of this article is that a common finding on brain MRI known as white matter hyperintensities actually has a significant impact on the likelihood of survival over the next several years. Traditionally, these abnormalities have been thought to be incidental findings, meaning not of particular clinical significance, but it turns out that we found for a very diverse population, they really had some association with uh, risk of death over the coming years. Why that is is not known or directly answered in the study, but it may have something to do with the effects on cognition, balance, and related disorders um, in other organ systems uh, related to small vessel disease. So one of the nice things about this particular study is it leverages um, the powerful tool of the Mayo Clinic Florida Cerebrovascular Diseases Registry, which has been continually funded and supported by the Mayo Clinic Foundation for a number of years. This has allowed us to accumulate uh, large data sets involving a wide variety of patients, some of whom are generally underserved when it comes to research. Our finding relates to clinical practice in that uh, MRIs are widely done in the evaluation of patients with cerebrovascular disease. And therefore, detection of white matter hyperintensities is uh, clearly available to the clinician. Uh, it now focuses the attention of the clinician to consider the effects on recovery and survival of having severe white matter disease. Furthermore, white matter hyperintensities are associated with hypertension and other diseases such as renal insufficiency, and it focuses thought of clinicians to uh, drive the blood pressure down to acceptable levels to minimize future burden of white matter hyperintensities, particularly in this vulnerable population. This finding means that patients um, are empowered to understand what it means when they get a radiology report in their medical record that says that they have so-called small vessel disease or ischemic small vessel disease or white matter hyperintensities. They go by many terms and uh, recognize that this may be a sign of something significant related to vascular risk factors. For example, it may be the visible manifestation of having poorly controlled or inadequately controlled blood pressure. Knowing this, it empowers patients to work with their doctor to basically get their risk factors under control through diet, exercise, and blood pressure control largely. The next step for this line of research is to understand the molecular underpinnings of white matter hyperintensity accumulation. And there's an intense amount of work surrounding understanding the genetic architecture, for example, of white matter hyperintensity so that we could come up with novel treatments or prevention strategies beyond what we already know, which is control of uh, blood pressure and avoiding cigarette smoking, for instance. We hope you found this presentation from the content of Mayo Clinic Proceedings valuable. Our journal's mission is to promote the best interests of patients by advancing the knowledge and professionalism of the physician community. If you are interested in more information about us, our home page is www.mayoclinicproceedings.org. There you will find access information for our social media content such as additional videos on our YouTube channel or journal updates on Facebook. You can also follow us on Twitter. More information about healthcare at Mayo Clinic is available at www.mayoclinic.org. This video content is copyrighted by Mayo Foundation for Medical Education and Research.